Ooh, what are these? These are GPUs. I just purchased them. Wow, it's pretty heavy. Where did you get all these GPUs? Well, I just saw that it's becoming a trend that every single company and people are releasing their own open source LLMs, Alpaca, Llama, Falcon, Mistral, blah, blah, blah. This is our trend to create our own open source LLM. I got a name for it. We're going to call it MGPT. Do you think they will beat GPT-4? Maybe, right? Give it a try. Sorry, I'm not. But talking about open source LLMs, I just figured out Databricks released a new open source LLM called DBRX, which seems to be beating lots of other powerful open source LLMs and even GPT 3.5 at some point. Hmm. Um, you can even fine tune that with your private data and host it privately in Databricks, potentially cheaper than these GPUs. Cool. But so don't do it. In their refund policy, they don't refund us. So it's better to get into new LLM release by Databricks called DBRX and see how we can check it privately with our own data. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, this is the time to talk about DBRX, which is one of the most recent and performant open source LLM model just released by Databricks. And if you don't know Databricks, Databricks is an AI company, which they do have my highest respect and I appreciate the vision they have, which is an ML platform. Not only can you use it for data warehousing, but also very advanced big data scale machine learning tasks that you can leverage and of course they use databricks platforms by themselves to train this dbrx as they noted it costs them almost 10 million dollar from initial research all the way for training this model over the course of three months and if i scroll down you can see that they're mentioning it is already beating a lot of well-known open source models and as you can see here on the screen dbrx is out of scoring llama 2 mixed trial uh for programming language understanding and math Obviously, math is one of the most challenging tasks for LLMs, and as you can see, the, the difference is also considerable at some points. So this is about just a general comparison of DBRX with other models. But interestingly, they have compared themselves with GPT 3.5, and look at that, for the same type of tasks, DBRX is outperforming GPT 3.5 released by OpenAI. Of course, it's not uh, outperforming GPT-4 Turbo, but it's still GPT-3.5 is an advanced model and seems that DBRX is, is beating that. And some interesting fact about DBRX is it is very fast. And the reason is it is based on mixed draft experts or MOE architecture. So what does that mean? Instead of when you ask a question from DBRX, instead of suddenly triggering all the parameters that are trained inside that model to answer that question or generate the tokens, it trigger a specific agents or blocks which are feed forward networks. So if let's say there are eight agents waiting for getting triggered to generate the next token, just two of them or four of them are gonna get triggered instead of all. So each time you ask a question from this LLM, not necessarily all the parameters are gonna get triggered and that's why it is extremely faster, although it has even higher parameters that it can train during, during the training phase. And I think they also have mentioned that 150 tokens per second is the speed and we're going to actually do a quick test together in databricks to compare the, the speed of dbrx with some other open source llm models before we get into the demo part just some more facts about the comparison of dbrx among some other open source well-known open source models as we discussed and as you can see these are some benchmark data sets and examples they have used on the first uh, column and almost for all open data sets, they have beaded other models. As you can see, DBRX has got the highest score. For some of them, for example, this data set or source example, mixed draw instruct was, um, sorry, yes, it was slightly better. And obviously the rest, except Vino, they have been already beating other source models that I have seen here in the table. And the most important part, Rack, 
If you are thinking about using DBRX to create a chat with your data or retrieval augmented generation chatbots, I think this reference is going to be interesting for you. As you can see, again, they have benchmarked DBRX with some other models, namely even GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Obviously, GPT 4 almost beat it all, except when you have 4,000 context token, sometimes DBRX got even better results than GPT 4. Well, it, it is exceptional, just except these two, the rest, GPT-4 has been meaning that. But look at GPT-3.5. Almost for all different contexts of length of tokens you have in RAG, it seems that DBRX has been beating GPT-3.5 majority. Sometimes not like this one. As you know, when we have more context or token, it is more challenging for the LLM, for the, for the RAG scenarios. That's why when we have the token number increased, the performance of the models also slightly get decreased, and this is true also for GPT-4 Turbo. But this is something, and compared with other open source models, it's already beating them, and even GPT-3.5, it is outperforming that too. Now, the main part is, okay, if I'm gonna choose DBRX, and by the way, you can fine tune even DBRX on your own data with your priority and deploy it by yourself, so you don't need to necessarily call it as an API if you're concerned about privacy. And let's check out the price, especially GPT 2.5 and DBRX, if they have similar or even DBRX better results, what's the price difference? So this is the pricing reference for DBRX. Again, you can use it like an API call, which is hosted by Databricks for you. You don't provision any computes and it is there ready for you to call it and you can uh, pay as you go. like on demand or you can pay in advance for amount that you're going to use and potentially you might even save some costs which is what you need to pay for but if you're going to go let's say per token this is typically what we can compare with OpenAI as well DBRX almost got 2.25 per million token input okay so 2.25 dollar but if I show you OpenAI this is the official documentation of them for GPT 3.5 per 1 million token input, it is just half a dollar. So you can consider this price difference. But don't forget about the performance which DBRX was outperforming um, GPT 3.5 and maybe that's a justification that they have higher price. Uh, but again, you can host it by yourself with your private data, you can fine tune it, but you have to also pay for the compute and potential fine tune if you want to do. So how we can access to this model? Well, there are a couple of ways to do so. If I go to Hugging Face and just search DBRX, you will reach to this um, page. They used to have the live demo. You can you could try DBRX, but it seems that they have turned it off. I don't know. This is something happened by Hugging Face. Maybe it's due to the demand. But uh, some couple of interesting facts about DBRX has been written here about the architecture. So how many parameters it has. Remember, I told you about MOE architecture. So it seems that it has 16 experts, but just four of them get triggered when you ask a question for generating the next token. Um, so a couple of other information. If you want to host DBRX by yourself, be cautious. It's going to need uh, 265 gigabyte of RAM if you don't want to use the ready service of Databricks, which you can just call. If you want to deploy it by yourself, this is a consideration. And it is open source, so you can deploy it anywhere, not necessarily inside Databricks platform. And uh, the token, okay, you can also deploy it on, on CPU or GPU or even multiple GPUs. So there are some code examples by Transformers uh, library that you can take a look and for intended use they have been benchmarking for rag and even some other llm based tasks so there's nothing rigid to say that it's a general purpose model mainly for data applications and lastly before i forget it has 12 room tokens when the model got trained and you can have the limit of 32,000 tokens this is the limit of the model when you're going to chat or put some context to the model be cautious about that i do believe that even for gpt 3.5 we do have 16k and 4k so the cost in dbrx is slightly high but it is faster it is performant so the performance got increased compared to gpt 3.5 and also the context window or the token size that you can add information to the model is larger in dbrx so now let's take a look at dbrx 
Um, this is my Databricks platform. You can just log into Databricks. It is hosted on Azure, but it is also available on AWS and GCP. And as we talked, it's a platform for data and AI. It's a whole topic by itself, what is Databricks, and I've created a lot of tutorial and videos about Databricks, so you can refer to them. But for now, we're gonna focus on the LLM applications and the DBRX model inside Databricks if you don't wanna host it by yourself. So if I go to the serving, these are the list of some models I have trained and deployed by myself in here in Databricks before, or some of Databricks models by themselves are deployed for me here and ready to be used, and I pay as I use them. And as you can see, DBRX just recently got added. Again, some information about DBRX as we discussed. So 32,000 tokens you can have as an input for this model, and up to 4K token can get generated. And the price we already talked about that. If you ask what is DBU, it is Databricks unit. Uh, it's a unit for calculating costs, but you have to do some multiplications. And I did it already. I showed you uh, the pricing. Uh, this is the same amount, actually. And now if I click on Query Endpoint, I can start asking questions. Here I can make a test or curl or even Python. It gives me a core example. So technically what I'm doing here is just asking question, what is Databricks? Send a request. And there you go. It's extremely fast. I'm talking about what is Databricks. OK. Now, what I'm going to do, if I go to the playground, I can even compare some of these open source models or deploy models here. So here, this is the, the playground. I can ask questions from DBRX. But if I click on Add, I can also start asking questions, let's say, from Mixed Trial. And another one, let's go with Llama 2. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the same question. So I just type what is Databricks, and because I have sync on, it typed that same question in all the models. So if I click on or say enter, DBRX was the fastest one. Did you see that? On 0 0.18 seconds, it uh, took for creating that amount of tokens compared to the almost, yeah, I can say two times faster. And I'm comparing that with some of the well-known open source models, and they're pretty advanced. So this is awesome. And again, you can fine tune and host this model by yourself so don't worry about oh i'm concerned about when i type something here or if user asks add some our own private data it goes to somewhere you have the full control and this is the beauty about open source llm that respect your privacy in case you you are cautious about it okay so let me know what you think about this model some pros and cons if you have tried that already please make sure you write down the comment share your opinion to the community and let other people enjoy and benefit from your experience i hope you enjoy this video if yes i would be very thankful if you like and take care i'll see you shortly in the next video the most challenging roles are usually given to best actors so don't worry too much about the challenges of your life maybe you are the best actor or actress dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video